So the electron elephants, we were doing, um, we were a data science course and I'm super, super proud of their progress, but I'm not going to keep talking. I'm going to let them do the talking about how amazing they are. So take it away. Hello, I'm Sarah. I'm a rising junior and I like to play video games and board games. Um, I was a machine learning specialist for this group and I joined AI camp because I thought it would be a fun experience. Hi, I'm Julius. I'm currently a rising senior and I have interests in programming, math, and machine learning. I'm, I was the project manager for this uh, team. Nicole, are you there? Oh, right. Hi, I'm Nicole. I just finished 10th grade and I like to play video games. I studied AP Computer Science last year and I took the exam. I joined AI Camp because I hope that I can learn something new here from both the teachers and my classmates. Hi, I'm Diego. I was the web designer in this team, and I like to draw, play video games, and read manga. AI Camp has been a very insightful experience from which I have learned a lot and had many good experiences and even made some friendships. Hi, I'm Vanil. I am a rising senior who likes to read and to hang out with my friends. I joined AI Camp because I wanted to make, I wanted to learn how to make and teach my own machine learning model, and I was the data scientist for this team. So our project was to create an AI model that could predict the outcome of crop growth based on weather patterns. We tried on our model in a total of 10 different parameters, each of them chosen for its correlation to the topic. So now I'm gonna give a brief de description of each parameter so you get a little bit of context. Date was specified in years, elevation was specified in meters, and pre precipitation explained the amount of rain or snow that falls in a zone in a year. Average temperature was measured in degrees Celsius and is the mean of all recorded temperatures throughout the year. Maximum and minimum temperatures are the parameters that tell the highest and the lowest recorded temperature in seven year, certain year. Sunlight is the total minutes of sunlight in a year. And then the three final parameters were latitude, longitude, and the state in which the crop was grown. Entering all values is not required, but more values will make the prediction more accurate. Values that fall outside of the US may not yield accurate results. Okay, the first example is when we enter all the values and it'll give us a prediction of 41 bushels per acre and in another example is when we just only enter part of the values, it will give us another prediction of 48 bushels per acre. And this one may not be as accurate as the previous one. So our website showcases a few of our findings and the, our project has a data set on Crop production and weather and EDA visualizations on our findings and a fully, tra fully trained scikit learn AI model. Our first visualization is a scatter plot that shows four different types of crops and how, as time goes on, how much how uh, how much the yield grows. As we can see, as time goes on, the yield exp go grows exponentially. Our next model is a 3D uh, scatter plot that compares corn yield to precipitation and the amount of minutes that uh, uh, the state gets. And uh, you can actually like interact with it and choose which states you want to see. This is, this is another 3D uh, scatter plot that is similar to the last plot we had. However, this one actually um, predicts and shows we yield. Our last visualization is actually a map of the United States where each state is assigned a specific color. The darker the color is, then the more wheat that this state has produced. 
For this project, we tried three different machine learning models. The first model that we tried was k-nearest neighbors, which when given a new input, it compares it against the inputs it was trained on and uses those with a weighted average or vote for regression or classification respectively. The image above shows classification with k, the number of neighbors set to three, and unfortunately for our purposes, K and N had pretty abysmal results with an R squared score of about 0.1 and a mean absolute error of about 24.5. The second model that we tried was a decision tree, which as shown in the image, works by making a series of decisions based on the inputs, such as if a given feature is greater than some threshold. The outputs of decision trees are fairly blocky as they effectively try to classify different sets of inputs into bins that represent certain ranges of outputs in a continuous space. Our use of decision trees had fairly good results with an R squared score of about 0.7 and a mean absolute error of about 13.2. The third and final model that we tried was partial least squares regression, which is a form of cross decomposition. Cross decomposition refers to the reduction of the number of input variables by creating latent variables that represent more than one input variable. Latent variables are intended to be less correlated with each other than the original input variables, thus making them more useful for certain types of machine learning models. After finding these, PLS regression creates a linear output, which in the model visualization below is a plane of best fit. This also had fairly good results with an R-squared score of about 0.7 and a mean absolute error of about 14.5. The best possible R-squared score is 1, with lower values indicating lower accuracy. Mean absolute error is calculated by averaging the absolute differences between the predicted and actual test values. The model comparison plot shown is for simpler models that only take in two inputs, partially because it's hard to graph uh, with more than three dimensions, but they still provide insight into how the models actually work. Model outputs are represented as surfaces that span the entire range of train slash test inputs, and the training and testing data are shown as blue and orange points, respectively. Each model is a distinctive shape. For example, KNN appears almost one dimensional in inputs due to the significant difference in scale between inputs and decision trees appear blocky due to the sort of classification of ranges nature described before. And finally, PLS creates a linear result as mentioned before. The data is fairly clustered, which means that finding a plane of best fit is challenging for each of these models. So we used our best machine learning model, which was decision trees, and we created some visualizations to show its accuracy. So this is a bar graph. Um, the red bars represent the predicted data the predicted corn yield um, based on the decision trees model and the blue bars are the actual training data. So as you can see, the machine learning model did a pretty good job of following the overall trend, but it was not 100% accurate. And the violin graph below shows the same information, but in a different format, as you can see here. So after we finished our project, we came across a few conclusions. Um, first of all, our data. We discovered that many of the factors in our data were correlated um, and each crop had an optimal growth conditions. Each crop had optimal growth conditions based on where it was and what sort of temperature it, um, environment it was living in. Um, while we were doing machine learning, we discovered that since um, crop growth and weather is not a very predictable topic. We had to really fine tune our machine learning so that it was more accurate and we could be proud of our work. Um, and agriculture and like weather is a big topic in the world. And it's really important because um, we can fight hunger with it and we can help farmers um, improve their efficiency. And we can also reduce waste and maybe even draw some conclusions about climate change. So if, if we really expanded on our project a little bit more, I feel like it would have a really big impact on the world. Um, we were the Electron Elephants and thank you so much for listening to our project. <laughs>